Good morning, beloveds. We are glad you are here. I invite you to stand as you are able for the invitation to worship. The eyes of all look to you, O oh God, and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand and satisfy, or satisfy the desire of every living thing. Let us sing our praise and gratitude to God with our opening hymn, You Satisfy the Hungry Heart. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. <coughs> we live in a broken and a hurting world that cries out for healing and peace, so let us pray together using the ancient words of the Kyrie. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Anthony, you can come on if you want to. It don't matter. I didn't know you were going to do it. It's all right. You want to do it? Either way. Go ahead. Take the next one. We'll, ta team, we'll tag it out. Go ahead. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise let us pray to the Lord Lord have mercy help save 
comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. Let us pray. God of the abundant table, you have prepared a feast for all peoples and poured out your life to fill us. Call us again to your banquet of grace. Strengthen us with your heavenly food and transform us into a generous and gentle people who share your hospitality and healing with all in need. Through Jesus Christ, the host, and the lover of our souls. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Uh, Pastor Christine is okay, just so you know. Uh, she's just got this tickle and this cough that just won't seem to go away, drives her crazy. We checked before the service started that if she had a coughing fit and had to step out, I'd step in, so we're good, okay? But you can say a little <laughs> prayer for her that, you know, that's an awful thing to have, that that would go away. At the most inopportune times, right? Yeah. Welcome to worship at West Lynn Lutheran Church as we journey with Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. If you are joining us online and want to participate in Holy Communion, please set your table at home with bread or crackers and wine or grape juice. Here in the sanctuary, we are providing non-allergenic, gluten-free bread, and we offer traditional communion wine as well as unfermented fruit of the vine. We believe the risen Christ is really present as we share this meal by the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm Carl Wright, the assisting minister. Pastor Scott Dunphy, whose pronouns are he, him, is our presiding minister today, and Pastor Christine Kaur will be our preaching minister, she, her. Actually, it's the other way around. Uh, I'm preaching, and, but, you know. It, <laughs> one of these it, weeks we'll get it, it One of these weeks we'll get it all right. what it says, so, but, you know, and with what's going on, who knows who's going to do what. So, you know, <laughs> it's, it's all good. All good. Thank you, Carl. Uh, if you're visiting either in person or online, we want to get to know you better. Uh, here in the sanctuary, you'll find info cards in the back of each pew, and we invite you to complete one and place it in the offering. Online, there's a link in the chat to complete one, and we thank you for doing this. Children are always welcome here, and there are activity bags and a playground for children to use during worship located in the back of the room. 
As we celebrate this season of Pentecost, we remember the power of the Spirit to cross all cultures, bridge the barriers of language and race, and heal the hurts of history, as well as present misunderstandings. And in that same spirit, we recognize and honor the Confederated Tribes of Siletz and the Confederated Tribes of the Grand Ronde, upon whose ancestral homelands this church is situated. Now we open our hearts to hear God's word. Good morning. My name is Jeff Young, and my pronouns are he, him, and I will be your reader this morning. The first reading is from the prophet Isaiah, the 25th chapter. O Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name, for you have done wonderful things, plans formed of old, faithful, and sure. For you have made the city a heap, the fortified city a ruin. The palace of aliens is a city no more. It will never be rebuilt. Therefore, strong peoples will glorify you. Cities of ruthless nations will fear you. For you have been a refuge to the poor, a refuge to the needy in their distress, a shelter from the rainstorm and a shade from the heat. When the blast of the ruthless was like a winter rainstorm, the noise of aliens like heat in a dry place, you subdued the heat with the shade of clouds. The song of the ruthless was stilled. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, a rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from St. Paul's letter to the Philippians, the fourth chapter. The apostle writes, My brothers and sisters whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge Eudia and I urge Syntyche to be of the same mind of the Lord, Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always, again I will say. Rejoice! Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, Think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. Word of God, word of life. Please stand as you are able for the gospel acclamation. Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Let God's people say, Glory to you, O Lord. Once more Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his servants to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. 
Again, he sent other servants saying, tell those who have been invited, uh, look, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered. Everything's ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized the king's servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those servants went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But then the king came in to see the guests, and he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. And then the king said to the attendants, bind him hand and foot and throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You can be seated. I invite the children to come up for our time together. <clears throat> Good morning. So I'm assuming this is true, but I'm going to ask anyway. Just, have you ever been happy? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And have you ever been sad? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So do you know what the word joy means? Does it mean happy or sad? Sort of. Sort of. Happy and joy are not the same thing. Because when you've been happy, it usually was because something good was happening, right? In fact, you see how the word happy and happening kind of are the, have the same root, okay? And when you were sad, it was probably because something really sad or something bad happened that made you feel sad, okay? Joy isn't about what's happening, or not happening. When uh, we were reading from the Bible here, Jeff read a verse from Philippians, and that's written by a man named Paul, and Paul said, rejoice in the Lord, always. Rejoice in the Lord. And what that means is joy is being with God. And you can be with God when you're happy, but you can also be with God when you're sad. God is with you no matter what's going on, what's happening or not happening. God is with you no matter what you're feeling, and being with God is where joy comes from. Okay, It's kind of like when you have felt sad, have you ever gone to like mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, somebody, and they, you just you know, they, you sat in their lap, they hugged you, they held you, they rocked you a little bit, you know. Uh, did that feel good to be with them like that? You know, so even though you're sad, it feels good to be with people who love you, okay? And so even though we're sad, sad sometimes and happy sometimes, always to be with God is joy comforts us and it strengthens us rejoice in the lord always there's a song about that do you know this song rejoice in the lord always have you ever heard it okay i'm going to try to sing a solo which is rough but those of you who know that can join in with me. it goes like this rejoice in the lord always and again i say rejoice rejoice in the lord always and again i say rejoice Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Okay, that's pretty easy, isn't it? It's just, you got the words. Anyway, can we try singing it, everybody together? Let's try it. 
Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Okay, now we're going to try something. You can do this as a round. Do you know what a round is? That means one group starts and then they wait and another group. So I need some helpers. Would you all be my helpers? Okay, so like from uh, Maggie over the four of you, would you stand up in front of this section right here, this section and this section? You can stand right here. You can be right here and turn and face these guys, okay? Because you're gonna lead them. Okay, these two groups, okay? And then you guys stand up and come over here and face these two groups, okay? This is you, the group you get to lead, okay? So they're going to start singing Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice, and they'll do that twice. And then when they get to that rejoice, then we're going to start Rejoice in the Lord all. Does that make sense? You'll see. It's going to work, okay? All right, let's, let's give it a try. Let's start with this group over here. Okay, let's go. You ready? Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice, rejoice in the Lord always. You ready? Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice, rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice, 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 and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice. Everybody, rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Good job, everybody. Okay, so hopefully now I've got that song stuck in your head, okay? It's going to be in there all day long, okay? And that's a good thing. All right. Thank you for coming up, and you can go back to your places. And will you all pray with me, please? God, you know where we're coming from this morning. You know what's going on in our lives, what we're feeling. You know, what's good, what's bad, what's happy, what's sad. Uh, Thank you for your presence. Thank you for, by the power of your spirit, you're wrapping loving arms around each one of us. Uh, and we can, we can just be with you. And, and that joy of being with you can be our strength. And speak to us now in our need. Bless the words of my mouth, the words of meditation in our hearts, the words of scripture. Take them and make them your living, loving word. We pray in the name of Jesus, the word who became flesh for us. Amen. So in this morning's gospel reading, Jesus tells a story about a wedding banquet, and it reminds me of my and my wife Susie's wedding uh, in more ways than one. Uh, this January, January 25th to be exact, will be our fifth wedding anniversary. Um, and people ask about this picture because it's, it, it's me and my wife, okay? Uh, uh, it's, um, Susie uh, won a drawing, uh, and the prize was a professional photo shoot for a wedding. Uh, and this was one of the pictures the photographer took. It's really beautiful. Uh, the setting is the Clackamas County Historical Society uh, Museum of the Oregon Territory over there right over Willamette Falls, the top floor. Uh, that's where we had our wedding reception. Uh, okay. 
It's a second marriage for both of us. And uh, we weren't too sure how our families would accept or support us. And it turns out, sadly, that our concerns were well-founded. To make a long story short, uh, one of my children and all of my adult grandchildren uh, could not commit to attending our wedding, let alone participating in it, until only a few months, and in one case, a few days and even a few hours before the wedding. They wanted me to wait longer to remarry after the death of my first wife, their mother uh, and grandmother. Susie and I waited over a year. Uh, they wanted us to wait five years. <laughs> so this would be our first <laughs> wedding anniversary. You know. In the end, uh, one grandchild did not attend our wedding, and one chose not to be in the wedding party. We wanted all of our family standing up there with us. Apparently, they could not get past their grief and the anger that is often part of grief. And they chose to make me and my new wife the target of that anger. And even five years later, you know, it's, it's still in process with some of them, uh, and it's painful at times. Some of Susie's family members had an issue with my being a Lutheran pastor. Uh, because they weren't sure if Lutherans were really Christians. Because Lutherans worship differently than they do. Uh, Lutherans welcome people they don't think the church should welcome. And Lutherans engage in social action in ways that they don't approve or agree with. Now, they did choose to attend our wedding, although with their presence came a certain amount of tension. Uh, and to this day, uh, some of them remain distant and aloof, uh, if not downright rude at times. And life's too short, <laughs> at least for me and Susie at this point in our lives. Uh, we have moved on as best we can, and better still, is the way that God's Holy Spirit of healing is moving and always at work. And we give thanks for five wonderful and fulfilling, grace-filled and life-giving years. Uh, yes, there have been difficulties and pain, but we look back and we feel incredible joy and gratitude. And I share all this because in Jesus' story about a wedding banquet, it's the wedding of a prince, uh, those invited by the king choose not to attend. I used to read this parable wondering at, you know, why would they do that? Who would not accept the invitation of a king to the wedding banquet of his son, you know? And they come, up, they, they come up with such lame excuses in, in this story, you know, dismissing the importance of the event, making it all about themselves and their busy lives rather than their relationship to the king, uh, let alone the betrothed couple and the blessing uh, of the beginning of their life together. One went away to his farm, Jesus says, and another to his business. That was apparently more important, more life-giving. Yeah. And then some tape actions that actually destroy life. You know, in this case, literally, they seized the king's servants, mistreated them, and killed them. I used to wonder at how they could do that. But now, after some of the experiences surrounding my wedding almost five years ago, not that it is in any way to be compared to a royal wedding, okay? Uh, I get how people can and do make choices that are destructive, hurtful, and self-centered. So then, the really puzzling or, or shocking point in the parable, and remember, that's how one often identifies the point of a parable, 
It's at the place in the story that is shocking or, or makes no sense. Uh, that's the point at which the parable is proclaiming something about the kingdom of heaven. Jesus began the story by saying, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to. And then that point comes when the king says to his servants, okay, the people I invited to the wedding banquet don't want to come. They're lost. Go therefore into the streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. And the servants do that. They invite everyone. Everyone, no distinction, it says, between good and bad. It's not either or. You know, it's literally both and in this story. And the wedding hall was filled with guests, it says. In God's reign, everyone is invited to the wedding banquet. Come. Will you accept the invitation? Will you accept the call? That's our courageous stewardship emphasis for this fall and for making a pledge or a guesstimate for your giving in 2024. Hopefully, you will call a new pastor in the remaining months of this year. And we hope and we pray that that pastor will accept the call. Will you accept the call? The call to you right now, which comes from God, is to resist the temptation to become overly anxious or fearful about how long this call process may be taking. The Spirit of God is at work. Will you trust the Spirit? Will you accept God's call? The call to you moving forward into 2024 is to sustain current levels of giving. That is, will you pledge and give at least as much in 2024 as in 2023 if not continue to grow in giving. You have been very courageous and faithful, generous and, and wonderful in 2023, at least to date. Uh, we've got a couple months to go. Uh, at this time last year, your courageous stewardship team shared with you that West Lynn Lutheran Church could not afford to call a new pastor unless giving increased. And you all accepted the call. You stepped up and you stepped out in grace and faith and pledges for giving in 2023 increased 67% over 2022. That's amazing. You know, on behalf of your courageous stewardship team and church leaders, thank you. That's amazing grace, okay? Thanks be to God. The Spirit of God is at work. And it is again time to accept the call. To keep it going into and through uh, this next year with a new pastor. Will you continue stepping out in grace and faith by pledging or making a guesstimate of giving for 2024? Because not everybody does that. It's really important that you do that. And then by, by giving generously to the work of God who invites everyone to the banquet. Please uh, be praying about this in the next few weeks. Uh, at the end of the month, the pledge cards are going to get mailed out. At the divine banquet to which we are all invited, as is everyone everywhere, the prophet Isaiah declares in that first reading, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich foods and well-aged wines. But there's one thing that won't be on the menu. 
because God will have eaten it first. The prophet declares, God will swallow up death forever. That is what God did in Jesus Christ on the cross and on Easter with an empty tomb. It's what Jesus was saying at the Last Supper and what we repeat every time we celebrate the mini banquet that we call Holy Communion or the Lord's Supper. We remember Jesus' words and actions that night before his betrayal and arrest and crucifixion. Jesus took the bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to the disciples saying, this is my body. This is what will happen to my body on the cross it will be broken for you and buried and rise again. God will swallow up death forever. And then the prophet Isaiah continues, the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces. Faces in Israel and Gaza. Faces in Ukraine and Russia. Faces in Portland, right here in West Lynn. And the prophet continues, the disgrace of all people, that people make destructive, hurtful, and self-centered choices will be taken away from all the earth, and it will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in God's salvation. Who wouldn't want to attend that banquet? Will you accept the invitation? Will you accept God's call. I think that's the point of the little addendum to the parable of the wedding banquet about the guest who was not wearing a wedding robe. That puzzles people. Some scholars don't think it was original to the parable, that it was added later by Matthew when writing his gospel. I don't know. When we get to heaven, we can ask Jesus, you know, if it still matters then. But I think we'll be so busy enjoying the banquet that it probably won't matter. What matters is how do we get into the banquet in the first place? What does it mean to accept the invitation? Apparently, at least according to this little addendum, nobody gets in without wearing a wedding robe. Where do we get one? We don't get one ourselves. It's a gift from God. It's like another parable that Jesus told about a person who was making some very self-centered, hurtful, and destructive choices. A son uh, who told his father, you know, I can't wait until you die to get my inheritance from you. I want it all now. And this crazy father gives it to him. And the son leaves, goes off to another country where he blows through his inheritance, is penniless and experiencing a famine, and he comes to himself is the line that Jesus uses. It's a great line. He comes to himself. This is part of what it means to accept the invitation, to accept the call. It is to come to self. To come to the self-realization that we are precious children of God who have messed up big time. <laughs> that sometimes we make very self-centered, hurtful, and destructive choices and God still loves us and invites us to the banquet. Will you accept God's call? In the parable of the prodigal son in Luke 15, which might be better titled the parable of the crazy loving father, uh, the son 
goes back to his father, having decided to tell him, I have sinned against heaven and before you. Uh, I am no longer worthy to be called your child. Treat me as one of your hired hands. But before he even gets the chance to say that, Jesus says that his father saw him coming and was filled with compassion and ran to him and threw his arms around him and hugged him and kissed him. And then his father said to his servants, bring a robe, the best one, and put it on him. And prepare the fatted calf and let us have a banquet and celebrate. Do you see where the robe comes from? See where we get a robe? It's a gift of grace from God, who is gracious and loving and invites us and everyone to the banquet. Will you accept the call? As the prophet Isaiah also declares on uh, chapter 61 uh, of, of the book of Isaiah, Rejoice in the Lord, for God has clothed us with the garments of salvation and covered us with the robes of righteousness. That we are in a right relationship with God by God's grace. It's a gift. From God, because God loves us and will never stop loving us. So stretch out into the arms of that robe this morning. Do you feel it? You know, uh, get comfortable and, and, and cozy in that robe. Wrap it close as God holds you close. And accept the call. We go through this every Sunday when I do this. All y'all looking at me like I've got five heads. <laughs> Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you, appreciate it. All right, here we go, ready? We're learning a song, here we go. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. Sing it. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, to your will to your will and to your way. To I'll say yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you and obey. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you and obey. From the beginning, one, two, and I'll say yes, Lord, to your will, to your will.
Amen. <laughs> Trusting in the transformative power of God's loving spirit, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. For the church of Jesus Christ in this and every land, that all followers of Christ share the mind of Christ and strive to live together in peace, staying firm in the grace of Christ and inviting everyone to the banquet. For our call committee, leaders, and members of the congregation that will always discern the Spirit's leading and guiding and follow wherever you lead. God of grace, hear our prayer. For green pastures and still waters, the Columbia Gorge and Oregon coast, and all the natural beauty of the world, that creation flourishes and humankind lives in right relationship with all that you have made. God of grace, hear our prayer. For the nations of the world and all who hold positions of authority, that they govern in accordance with God's vision of justice and peace, providing shelter and refuge to all in need, striving toward the goal of well-being and prosperity for all. We pray for peace in Israel and Gaza, Ukraine and Russia, and in our own Congress, that legislators lay down partisan bickering and work together for the common good. God of grace, hear our prayer. For all experiencing valleys of difficulty, illness and grief, that they may be healed and comforted and find rest and wholeness in the presence of the Good Shepherd who walks beside them. For the ministry of the Quilts of Empowerment to the impoverished women and girls in Kenya, that the goal of economic independence and education would be realized. In our own community, we pray especially for mommy and daddy to come home safely. Hmm. For all those who are ill, and their recovery for all working the harvest fields that this abundance feed many for teachers nurses for auto workers and for all seeking just work and just pay prayers of healing and comfort for Mary diagnosed this week with cancer and prayers of healing for Ryan who broke six bones in a fall. God of grace, hear our prayer. prayer. For this community of believers, that wherever there is conflict or discord, the love of Christ may keep us united and make us mindful of all that is true, honorable, just, pure, pleasing, commendable, and excellent. God of grace, hear our prayer. For whom or what else do the people of West Lynn pray? Earthquake, God of grace, hear our, our prayer. prayer. In thanksgiving for the beloved saints who now rest in your mercy, that their faithful witness guides your church until the day we join them at your heavenly feast. We pray for the services this week for Greg Rice and Thomas Davis, that they would be times of fulfillment for your promise to bless those who mourn and comfort them. God of grace, hear our prayer. Gracious God, into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your unending love and amazing grace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and lover of our souls. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. It is now time to express our gratitude for God's abundance through the practice of generosity and the giving of an offering. You may give electronically or by mailing your offering to the church office or placing it in the offering plate.
Let us pray. Holy God, who makes all things whole, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Give us glad and generous hearts toward those who hunger in any way that all may know your love and care. And prepare us now to feast on the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and lover of our souls. Amen. Now is the time for all of us to gather at the table of the crucified and risen one. And for those joining us from home, please have your elements for Holy Communion ready at your table. The Lord be with you. Please stand. Let's try that again. The Lord be with you. And also with you. All right. <laughs> Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. We give you thanks, O God, through Jesus Christ, your beloved, whom you sent to save and redeem us and to proclaim your will and your word. Jesus is your word, inseparable from you, through whom you created all things and in whom you take delight. Jesus is your word, sent from heaven to Mary's womb, who there took on our own nature and our own lot and was shown forth as your chosen. Jesus is the one who fulfilled all your will and won for you a precious people who stretched out his hands in suffering in order to free from suffering all those who cry out to you. Jesus is the one handed over to a death he freely accepted in order to destroy death, to break the bonds of evil, to crush hell underfoot, to give light to those who struggle to see, to establish your unconditional covenant, and to show forth the power of the resurrection. And taking bread and giving thanks to you, said, take and eat. This is my body, broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And in the same manner, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all people, that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. <coughs> Remembering then Jesus' love for us on the cross, coming forth from the tomb and pouring out the Holy Spirit, we give you thanks for making us worthy to stand before you and all, you and all that you have made as messengers of your grace and peace. Send your spirit upon these gifts of grain and from the earth and fruit of the vine and gather into one all who share this bread and cup and fill us with your Holy Spirit to empower us for serving. And when words fail us, we pray the words your followers have used for centuries. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and give us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom <coughs> and glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Everyone is welcome at this table of grace. And for those at home, now is the time to eat and drink your bread and cup. And these words are for you. The body of Christ is given for you. The blood of Christ is shed for you. And here in the sanctuary, I invite you all to be seated. <coughs> <coughs> Now is the time to come to the table. We will have two stations for communion this morning, and the ushers will guide you.
I invite you to stand as you are able. Let us pray. The body and blood of Christ feed us and fill us. Strengthen us and keep us in God's grace unto eternal life. Amen. 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 Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. We pray that in your mercy you would strengthen us through this gift in faith towards you and in fervent love towards all the world for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior and lover of our souls. Amen. Amen. 
You may be seated for the announcements. And we have a number of announcements this morning. Uh, this Monday, we continue with the men's Bible study on the theology of wine. Uh, we open up about 5.15, but just be here by 6.30. Women's Bible study continues on the Lord's Prayer, Wednesdays, October 25th at noon in the library. The Grief Recovery Group next Sunday, October 22nd, following worship in the library. If you've been part of the class or if you're interested in learning more, please come by. Memorial service for Greg Rice on this Tuesday at 11, at 1 p.m., sorry, and for Thomas Davis this Thursday at 11 a.m. Trunk or Treat will be Saturday, October 28th from 2 to 3.30 p.m. Bring all the kids for a fun afternoon. All trunks need to be safely parked in the upper parking lot at the church by 1.30 p.m. Oh. I put those there. Yeah. Oh, There's and, props. Yes. <laughs> And there's. Oh, sorry. Okay. Me. All Saints Sunday is coming as we honor those by name, those people who have died since All Saints Sunday in 2022. You're invited to bring a photo of your loved one who has died in years past. There will be spaces set up in the, to set up their pictures as we remember all in that great, great cloud of witnesses, those who have lived a life of faith and obedience to God and who serve as an example and encouragement for us. Uh, if you've not filled out a card and wish to, uh, please do so. I don't know if we have the ushers, perhaps. Um, sure, Ush ushers Usher. or kids. Oh, kids, somebody, the somebody kids who could... The kids were pretty good at this last... They did wonderfully. They did wonderfully. <laughs> come on, sure. girls. Come on. Yeah. And pass these out to anyone who needs them. The Creative Spirits team is putting together Thank an all-church um, art installation. And if you would write the names of your loved ones on the cards that the kids are passing out, um, on the back, the white side, um, then we will install them in a special installation for All Saints Sunday. And we ran out last week, so if you didn't get one, let's try again. Mm -hmm. You may take as many as you need, as long as everybody gets at least one. Okay. Uh, do we have any other announcements, oh, uh, and, Susie? But, uh, and then while, while they're doing that, Linda Colstead has oh, an announcement. Okay. Anybody over here? And Susie will... Oh, and Susie Badeau. <laughs> Linda first, then Susie. <laughs> Good morning, I'm Linda Colstead, and I know this is awfully early, but we're talking about the Ladies' Advent Breakfast already. This is the 40th year. I can't believe it's been that long. Um, so we need to get hostesses this month. And um, Donna King, Thank you. Um, Nancy Hawkins, and Darlene DC can help answer any questions, and only Nancy's here today. But uh, we'll, I'll be out back, and anybody that would like to set up a table, we'll give you lots of help. I don't want to take any more time right now. Okay. We'll see you then. Okay. And the breakfast is the first Saturday in December, December 2nd, from 9 a.m. to 11. Okay, Susie. Uh, your quilters, um, we like to make blankets and quilts. Here's a sample of the blanket. And with, uh, we buy these on the bolt, and often at the end of the bolt, if you buy the rest of it, you get it for really cheap. <laughs> <laughs> so we started making stoles <coughs> and scarves. We haven't done this since 2019, BC, before COVID. So <laughs> all you who bought before, I'm pretty sure you're ready for a new one. So for the next two Sundays, we're going to have a table set up out in the hallway, offer the, them for um, a suggested $5 donation. We take cash and check. So uh, please come check us out for the next two Sundays. <laughs> no, no, no blood was lost. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the fringe looks like the most fun part. Yes. <laughs> I invite you to stand for our sending song. And one announcement. Uh, oh. Last Sunday of October, Portland Boy Choir will be singing here for our service Ooh. in the morning, exciting times. And if you want to, we're doing a fundraiser. We're uh, doing 
uh, selling pies. So if you want oh. to see me after or in the near future, please come see me and get your pie. All types <laughs> of you, flavors. I'll show you. I have the whole thing with me right <laughs> now. So, okay. Taste and see. Here we go. Speaking of pies, right? Receive God's blessing. God, the source of love. God, the word of life. God, the spirit of joy unending. 
bless you now and keep you forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Share the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, and peace with one another, and then go in peace out into our world and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hoorah! Yeah, yeah. You know, sure.